welcome you to today's study. We're so happy to see uh, many of you for the first time, but also to see a brother from Uganda who had a head challenge, but back now. Uh, Pastor Ephraim, Bishop Ephraim, thank you so much for coming. So good to see you. Uh, tonight, I would like Sister Grace from, I believe it's her evening, Sister Grace from uh, Houston to pray for us. Sister Grace. Mr. Grace, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you, sir. That's right. But I'm at work, sir. <laughs> oh, you're at work. <laughs> yes. Right. I just, yeah, I put my things on mute. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, sir. Right now, that's fine. So we, yes, we will ask um, Abel. Ebe from Botswana to pray for us. Brother Ebe. Okay, let us pray. Good evening. Good evening, all. We thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the physical nourishment that we enjoyed throughout the day. And Lord, the spiritual nourishment that sustained us through the whole week. Lord, lead us as we start another session today. May your love, Heavenly Father, continue to Lead us, may your love continue to build us that goes between all of us. To build the strong bonds as we come together to be a team. We may never have individuals, but Lord, your love has brought us together. And your goodness, Heavenly Father, has kept this all so strong. Lord, lead the speaker today as he delivers a way to us and allow put the way to practice in all aspects. Not open up to questions, to answers, to correction, to be rebuke, rebuking, and to anything else, Heavenly Father, that can lead us to be stronger men and women of God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Fra Abel. We hope you are fine in Botswana with your family. Uh, tonight, Uncle Peter was... We are all fine. Uncle Peter Zodo will not be able to meet with us. He gave his apology about one hour ago because he's not feeling fine. And um, <clears throat> we need to be praying for him. But I also want us to take a few minutes and pray for our country, South Africa. This is being coordinated from South Africa. And South Africa is facing a lot of challenges because of the spiritual mandate God has for South Africa in the end times. And I want us to pray for, let's take a few minutes just to pray for South Africa. The Bible in, in Psalm 127 verse 1 says, except the Lord builds a house, the builders build in vain. Except the Lord watches over the city, the watchman will it in vain. I want us to know that there's a higher power that's needed in the building of houses and building of cities and nations. We normally do our best as human beings, but except the Lord, Bills will be working in vain. So I want us to pray that the hand of God will touch South Africa. There's a lot of crisis now, health crisis, and social crisis. But let's pray for the intervention of the Almighty God. So, Father, we lift up South Africa tonight to you. We pray for the peace of this country. We pray for your intervention. We realize that except you build a house, except you build a nation, except you watch over a city, the efforts of human beings will be in vain. Lord, our government is trying. People are trying. But we acknowledge the fact that except Lord, you help us, we will work in vain. 
We pray this day for your intervention in the health situation of South Africa and the social challenges South Africa is facing now. We pray for peace. You are able to make wars to cease. We pray that wars will cease in South Africa and you will command peace over South Africa. Lord, we resist the evil one. We come against the wicked one. The Lord is speaking against this nation because of the mandate you have for this nation in the end time. Father, we pray that your purposes for South Africa will not be futile. Lord, we ask you to, 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 to awaken us from slumber, awaken us from stupor. The Lord, we must stand in the place of waiting and watching that South Africa may not be destroyed. Lord, we thank you. We pray that you make a new covenant, fresh covenant with the people of South Africa and you give the nation peace and prosperity. Thank you, Father. Rebuild that which has been destroyed. Restore that which the enemy has eaten up. Keep, oh God, families healthy. Keep, oh God, the nation healthy. Lord, pour your love once again upon the land, that, Father, there might be peace. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we thank God so much for that prayer for South Africa. We believe the Lord our God will intervene. Um, so I'll be teaching tonight, I'll be teaching tonight, but before I share the screen with you, I want to explain to you first and foremost the purpose for why we gather here. This is not supposed to just be another church we're doing on the internet we have a vision. We need to explain to you why we are meeting all the time to empower you, to equip you. As Flockhouse Ministries, our vision is to multiply disciples. We want to multiply disciples of Jesus Christ. Now, multiplication means I teach you and you teach another person who is able to teach another person, who will also be able to teach another person. Uh, it becomes a chain. So it's disciples, making disciples who will make disciples. And it continues that way. So it's not like we are just another church to give you knowledge that will not be used. Really what we're teaching you, we want you to take it and teach someone else or teach other people. That's the reason we gather. We want to multiply disciples. And we're taking that from I, I, we have just two key scriptures that drive us. Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20, and then 2 Timothy 2, 2. Matthew 8, 28, verse 19 says, Therefore go ye into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the very end of the age. So we see the direction the church is supposed to be going from that scripture. Go and make disciples. That's the assignment. It went beyond just making of converts and planting of churches. Disciples have to be made. And then in 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, Paul charging Timothy says, those things you heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, the same entrusts to faithful men and women who are able to teach others also. So we have the vision to multiply disciples and our, our mission actually is to train faithful men and women who are able to teach others also. So we came on Zoom to reach out to you to empower you so that you'll be able to teach someone else also. That's a goal for why we, we meet here. And we're trusting that you will be a faithful man and woman who will take these things that you are learning and teach someone. It doesn't have to be a large crowd. It can be from your family. You start a small Bible study group. Uh, we're not expecting mega churches necessarily from here, but we want you to see that we're depending on you to extend this to someone. And uh, <clears throat> we believe in promoting personal intimacy with God, that every believer should have friendship with God. Every believer should personally know the Lord. We know that we are no longer in the old covenant. 
when you have to go through priests. You in the new covenant are priests. Peter says you are his royal priesthood. So you're not just priests, but you are also kings and priests. And so we believe in the priesthood of every believer. Every believer in the new covenant is a priest. And a priest is one who serves the Lord. In the new covenant, when the Lord Jesus died on the cross, the curtain in the temple was torn into two, showing that the new way into God's presence was opened. And every one of us, each one of us can have direct access to God. So we are promoting personal intimacy with God, helping you to know God personally, develop an intimate fellowship, relationship with God, and through that become a servant of the Lord. We believe you are a priest, you are a servant. And so last week, Uncle Peter was helping us to discuss a little more on stewardship. And we will look at that briefly as a way of summary before I continue with my teaching today. So all we're doing is to empower you so that you can reach out to someone. And we started from um, helping you to understand the times we're in, the end times. Then we move on to discussing evangelism. And from there, we're discussing discipleship. And after this, we'll discuss the church. We'll help you to know what the church really is. So in a nutshell, that's what Flockhouse Ministries is about. And that's what we are happy to have you here to be part of. So you are learning, you are being equipped to be able to multiply yourself, to be able to extend this to someone else. We're depending on you. We're hoping you are a faithful man and woman who will take the same things we've committed to you to share with others. So we have a school where we're training young people to become disciples and to become disciple makers. So um, even the Zoom Bible class, that's what it's all about. So I want to thank you so very much for always coming. Extend the invitation to as many people as you can so that together we study the word of God. So tonight I want to share screen with you and begin to speak with you on how to make disciples. All right, so just a moment as we share screen. All right, so David Abam is my name, and I'll be talking to you on disciple making. In this picture you see here, you see two ladies discussing together and intimately. So we are expecting that you will have a disciple. You will have someone or some people, whether members of your family or some of your friends, or somebody somewhere that you could sit together, take some of the discussions here and share with them. You don't have to know the whole Bible, but as you attend and you listen to some of the teachings, we expect you to have someone that is like your Timothy, which you are teaching and empowering to become exactly like you. Right, so that's, the reason for that picture, it doesn't have to be too many people. Few people in your cycle will be okay. Now, there's a core reason for what we'll be discussing, core value for this whole thing. It says God looks for men and women who disciple, who coach, and mentor other believers in Christ, who in turn become leaders of leaders that effectively train others. So God is looking for partnership with men and women. As powerful as he is, he's not able to do anything on earth except he finds a man or he finds a woman who would collaborate with him, who will serve on his behalf, who will act on his behalf. So God is looking for those men and women 
who disciple and coach and mentor other believers in Christ. New believers in Christ will need to be helped to grow. They will need to be fed. They will need to be empowered. And as they are growing in Christ, your role as a disciple will also be changing. It is just the same way in which we raise biological children. You give birth to a baby, the baby depends entirely on you for protection and for feeding and for preservation. But as the baby begins to grow and comes to the place where he wants to act on for himself, you become a coach. You just train the baby, the child, now it's no longer a baby, and you give the child a way to move forward. Uh, like in, in practical terms, you find coaches, coaches of, of several games, might have played the games themselves, and now they are old or they are elderly, they can teach other younger people how to do it. And um, that's coaching. Uh, so when people are growing in the Lord, it gets to a point where you just have to give them guidelines on how to do things. So they become players themselves while you are supporting them from behind. Now, most of you here, we've had relationships with you and uh, of some kind, and we know that you have grown. And at this stage, most of you uh, <coughs> uh, have the need of just coaching so that you can enter the field yourself and play. And the age doesn't matter. Even if you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are 60, you are heading for 70, whatever, you can still mentor people, you can still coach people. Uh, you can still play. You can have one or two people in your life that you can influence. Um, so that's, that's, that's the, the, the purpose. And we want you to know that those people you are helping in turn will become leaders of leaders that will effectively train other leaders. So all that we're doing here, that's the goal. And I want you to be intentional about it. Take what you hear here, teach someone so that someone will also teach another person until the world is completely evangelized and discipled. So our objective is to help you understand that the first level of multiplying yourself is making disciples and to make this a priority in your life and ministry. You have grown as a believer. If you have grown as a believer, the next thing you need to do is to make another believer and help that believer to also grow. So you have this responsibility of multiplying yourself. I mean, it's like a child who has grown and is now a, a mature for marriage. That child is expected to have his own family and grow the family. You know, although he himself was raised as a child, no longer a child now, he's able to marry his wife now and raise his own children. And he continues that way so that you have generational uh, people, gen one generation bringing forth another generation and all that. So we want you to understand that in Christianity too is the same thing. You do not have to be a barren Christian. You, know, you do not have to be a fruitless Christian. You should be one that has born fruit. You, are, you have a, a, a spiritual child or spiritual children that you're empowering to become like you or even better than you. And that's our objective. So what's the direction we need to discover? First of all, the Lord Jesus called us to catch men. The catching of men is the making of converts. Um, I want to say, Yanda, if she's free, to read for us Matthew 4, 19. I'm precious to get ready, precious Abam, get ready to read for us Matthew 28, 19. Brother Lois, you will read for us John 15, 16. All right, so Sister Yanda, if you are ready, you read for us Matthew 4, verse 19. Is Sister Yanda with us? Hello? 
Hello, Sister Yanda. Okay, Sister Dukas, Dr. Mufalali, maybe you could read for us Matthew 4, 19. Matthew 4, Matthew 4, chapter 19. Um, I'm reading four, from King James. Yes, sir. I'm reading from King James. And he said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Lucas. Now, the first disciples that Jesus called, he called them to follow him. Now, as they follow him, he said, I will make you fishers of men. So, they, they, yes, Sister D, maybe you put off your mic. All right. So, the catching of men, the making us of the, 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 the Lord Jesus making us into uh, fishers of men is the ultimate. It says, but we should follow him. So there are two things we need to understand here. First of all, we must be disciples ourselves. We must follow him. We must learn from him. That's talking about discipleship. So when we're talking about discipleship, we're talking about my personal work with Jesus, my personal followership, my personal relationship with Jesus. Now, in that relationship, it says, I will make you. Then this process of making me into the type of person he wants me to be, the transformation that occurs because I'm a follower, follows my following him. And then the assignment is that of catching men. I will make you fishers of people. You will fish for people. So the first thing we see is looking for converts, getting people converted, and that we do through evangelism. Then it's followed up with making those people disciples. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, I think precious. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, it says, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. That's Did right. Thank you. So the Lord Jesus was specific about the direction the church should go in ministry. He said, make them, make them disciples. Go into all the world and make disciples. So the assignment is clear. The assignment was not just to go and plant churches. The assignment was not just to go and run programs. The assignment is to go and make disciples. So we understand that those converts are raw materials that we convert into disciples. So what's the difference? The convert is a believer. We are not supposed to just make believers. We are also supposed to make followers. So the things the person has believed we're helping him in discipleship to practice them. So he is now, you know, a, a doer of what he has believed. So it begins with belief, but it doesn't stop at believism. It moves into following what you believe, practicing what you believe. When you, you believe it, you practice it. You accept it means you practice it. So we help them to move from just a mental conversion attitude, I believe Jesus, into practicing the word of Jesus. The Lord Jesus himself said, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. So that's what we are helping them to achieve in making them disciples. So it's clear that the assignment is not just go and evangelize. The assignment is evangelize, but make those people you have converted disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And those disciples should be able to abide. Those disciples should abide. I don't know who I asked to read uh, John 15, 16, but if you remember, you can please read it for me. John 15, 16.
All right, John 15, 16 says, you did not choose me, but I choose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Powerful scripture, you did not choose me, but I choose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. So each one of us is supposed to go and bear fruit. You were specifically chosen by the Lord Jesus. You didn't choose him really. He chose you and he chose me. And he said, we should go and bear fruit. So fruit bearing is necessary for everyone that has been chosen by Jesus. Everyone that is saved is not for just apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Actually, those are offices that are preparing the body of Christ for the work of ministry, for the work of service. So here we see that every believer is supposed to bear fruit. Go and bear fruit. Jesus chose you for this reason of bearing fruit. But he says, those fruit you bear should last. Fruit that will last. Now, for us to have fruit that will last, we need to labor on them until they become disciples, disciples that will last, not people that after a few years, they fall away from faith. So it says we should make sure that those fruits we're bearing abide, remain, they last. So we, we have this direction, and I hope it's becoming clearer that it's my responsibility, it's your responsibility to make a convert or convert and to turn those converts to become disciples. We turn our believers, those who say they have believed, to become followers of Christ. And from following Christ, we make sure they are rooted in Christ and they're able to stand. You know, this is how, this is the responsibility of parenting. When you bring forth children into the world, you protect them, you feed them, you train them so that they, they, they grow up and they are established by themselves. And some of those trainings will involve taking them to tertiary institutions or universities and paying for their fees and making sure they're self-sufficient in their time. This assignment is not just for biological children, but also for spiritual children. The people we have brought into Christ will have the responsibility to empower them, to equip them, to follow Jesus and to stand, to last. All right. And as they are lasting, they should also produce fruits. They should also raise other disciples. That's what we're now seeing in 2 Timothy 2, 2. I would like, um, I would like someone in the school to read it for us. James, if you are there, you can read it for us. Someone in the school.